Most Python developers never learn this feature, even though they use it every single day. Now look, all of the popular frameworks like Flask, FastAPI, Django, Pydantic, SQL Alchemy, they all use what I'm about to show you here, and it's funny that most devs don't even know that it exists. Now I'm talking about properties and descriptors. Don't worry, I'm gonna break them down for you in this video. They are a more advanced Python feature, but they're really interesting to learn about, and I'm excited to kind of get into the complexity here that's oftentimes not shown on YouTube. All right, so let's get started here. In order for me to explain what these features are, we first need to look at how you write code without them. So here on my screen, I have a class that looks pretty familiar. Especially if you've worked in an object-oriented programming language before, you're probably familiar with the concept of getters and setters. The basic idea is you define some type of internal or private attribute. In Python, we do that by using a leading underscore. Now what this does is just indicate to other developers that this attribute is meant to be used internally in the class. And even though we don't have any protection on someone actually going ahead and modifying this attribute, it's just a convention that's common in Python. So what we do then is we have something like a getter that just gives some kind of protection to this attribute and allows us to access it from this method, getPrice. We then have something like a setter, and the setter allows us to set this internal attribute by again, passing some value. And typically we do some type of validation just to make sure that this uh, internal attribute here never has some invalid value. Same thing here with the get quantity and the set quantity. Again, this should be very familiar. Now in Python, there's actually a built-in feature that can handle this getting and setting for us and gives us a much more elegant way of doing that. And that's what we're gonna talk about properties. Okay, super quick pause, I promise. I wanna let you guys know I have a newsletter. It's completely free. You can sign up for it from the link in the description. And if you sign up, I will send you a free guide on how to make money from coding. It's about a 10 page PDF, as well as send you coding challenges, coding project ideas, inspiration, stories, tips, all kinds of fun stuff. Join from the link below. So check this out. I've got the exact same class implementation as before, except now I'm using what's known as the property decorator. Now a decorator is just something that can go on top of a function and essentially modify it or kind of change its behavior. And what this allows us to do in Python is to implement setters and getters in a lot more elegant way. Now before, if we looked at the previous class, notice that if I wanted to actually use getPrice or setPrice, I need to actually make a method call. For example, I would need to write something like this, right? I could say p is equal to product. I can set the price with the method and then I can get the price using that method. Now look, this is fine, but you're gonna see in this example here why it's so much cleaner. So what this property decorator allows us to do is the exact same thing that we had with our getter and setter methods previously, except we're able to access this attribute without having to do a specific method call. We can just access it like we normally would with any normal attribute on our class. Let me show you an example of what I mean and then we can dive into the syntax. So again, remember that before we needed to do something like dot get price or dot set price. But here, when we use the property, I can change the code significantly. So I could say P is equal to better product. And then if I want to assign a quantity or a price, I can just say P dot price is equal to something like 10. And then if I wanted to print out the value, I can just say P dot price. So I no longer need to add this get underscore price or this set underscore price and use a method call. I can just use this attribute like I normally would any other attribute on my class. Now the way that works is because I've decorated a method with the name of this attribute called price. So I've said self dot underscore price. This is the internal attribute storing my state. I've then decorated a new method with the name of the kind of accessible attribute that I want to use. In this case, I'm calling it price. And this just returns, well, the internal attribute. Then I can actually have whatever the name of this is dot setter. So at price dot setter, because this is now my property. And then I can create something with the same name as price, but decorated with setter, which allows me to have all of that setting logic. Now we can also have a deleter. There's a few other methods that we can add, but you can see that this does actually clean up the code quite a bit. And it means that all of our methods related to getting, setting, deleting are all kind of combined together here under one property. So it keeps them a little bit more organized and again, allows us to use these attributes or properties in a much more natural way. And in case you're not really understanding the point of even using the getters and setters in the first place, let me show you an example of what happens if I try to set the price to a negative value. 
So if I go here and I try to set my price to something like negative 10, let's bring up our terminal and let's run our example 1.py. And you can see that it gives me an error and says value error price cannot be negative. Whereas if I just tried to modify the internal attribute, the one that we shouldn't touch because it's internal, you'll see that if I do this, it works totally fine and it gives me the value negative 10. Now I don't want that. I want to be able to protect this internal attribute. So that's why instead I use the property because now we have to go through this method in order to make a change to this attribute. So I know that if someone's using this correctly and they're using price, right? They're using our property rather than the internal attribute, which they shouldn't be using, that I'm never going to have an invalid value you and I'm not going to mess up the state inside of my instance. This is very common in object oriented programming to have this getter and setter pattern. And here in Python, you can implement it a lot cleaner by using a property rather than just a normal getter and setter like we saw here. Now we'll keep diving into this in just one second, but I do want to let you know about a fantastic free resource that I put together in collaboration with HubSpot. And this is called how to land a developer role in the world of AI. Now this draws on my over a decade of experience and covers the top programming languages to master and the most effective methods for learning them. It includes best practices for creating your portfolio and resume, along with recommendations for YouTube channels and other resources to enhance your development skills. I've left a link to it in the description where you can check it out completely for free. Now, personally, my favorite part of this guide is the long list of resources like YouTube channels and websites that allow you to enhance your programming skills completely for free. This content is really focused on helping you stand out and distinguish yourself in the world of AI and offers essential insights and tips to remain competitive as a developer. I have a link to it in the description and I want to give a massive thank you to HubSpot for sponsoring this video and providing this resource and tons of others completely for free. So let's move on to a slightly more advanced example here where we look at some more things that you can do with properties. So as a recap, you saw that we can define a property by using the at property decorator on top of some kind of method and that method will be named whatever you want the property to be named. Then we can return some value. Typically this is linked to some type of internal attribute that starts with an underscore. Again, the underscore just denotes as a Python convention that this should be private or internal. It doesn't actually mean that we can't modify it, but it's used quite commonly in Python in object oriented programming. Now, once we define this property, we can optionally define something like a setter. This will control the logic for changing this property if we want to make a modification. Next, we can also add something like a deleter, which I didn't show you previously. Now, this will be triggered if you use the del keyword. So if I were to do del and then my instance, so, you know, something like self dot name or whatever the uh, property name is on that instance, then this would be triggered and we can control that logic and see, first of all, if we should be able to delete it and what happens if we do want to delete that property. Moving on, we can also have things like read only properties. Now, this is simply a property that's defined with only the getter, not a setter. So if I just decorate something with a property by default, this will be read only because we haven't associated any kind of setter. So there'll be no way to actually change what this attribute is. Beyond that, we also can have something like a cached property. Now this decorator actually comes from the Funk Tools module, which you may have seen before in Python. And this allows us to define a property that once computed will not recompute, it will just return whatever the cached result is. So the first time I call this, it will compute because it hasn't already been triggered, but once it's been called, it will just return whatever the previous was, result was, sorry, unless we clear the cache. And the way that we would clear the cache is simply deleting this property or deleting the attribute which would then need to be redefined. I'll show you what I mean in a second with that, but let's have a quick look at actually using this class here. And you can see again, some of the advantages of the properties. So you can see we define some product here, coffee mug, and then we have the price of 10 and the cost of five. You see that if we want to get the name, which is one of our properties, we can do that by just using dot name. Again, we don't need to do something like dot get name and the actual name is being stored in this internal attribute underscore name. So it's being protected with our property. Continuing, if we want to set the name, we can do that. So we can say product.name is equal to tmug. And as long as that passes the validation, then this is fine and it will set it. Then if we wanted to do something like delete the name, we can just do delete product.name. That will then trigger the deleter to run, which you see right here. And then of course, if we were to print out the name after that, it would be equal to none because we had deleted it. 
when it comes to something like a read only property if we were to print this out we would get five and then you'd see that if we tried to modify the profit margin it would say error you can't set read only properties so if i uncomment this line actually here because it's commented right now and i run my code you'll see that it gives me an error and it says property profit margin of product object has no setter which is pretty much telling me hey this is read only so you can't modify it and beyond that you can see all of the other logic that was printing out now let me just remove these two lines here and let me show you what happens when we use the cached property. So we can set something like the reviews. We're using the internal attribute here, which is fine because we didn't define a property for that. And then watch what happens when I try to print out the reviews twice. Again, because I'm using the cached property here, in the first instance, it should say that it's calculating this because it's actually running the function. In the second one, it's just gonna return whatever that cached result is. So if I go back into my terminal and I say Python example 2.py, you can see that it says calculating the average gives me the return value and then the next time it doesn't calculate that because it's already been cached. Now if we did want to force it to calculate, what we can do is simply delete that property. So we can say del product.average review. And then because this will be removed, we're going to be able to run this again. So notice that now it will calculate it twice because we deleted that attribute so it was no longer cached or saved. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Just a bit more advanced use case here when it comes to the getter setters and the properties. Now what I wanna do is talk to you about something known as descriptors, which is where this starts getting really interesting. So have a look at this code here. It may look familiar, especially if you've worked in a module like Django before and you've defined something like a Django model. See that we have a few different attributes here and we make them equal to an instance of positive number. Now I haven't showed you the underlying implementation, but the point is we assume that obviously we can only store a positive number in these attributes. And by the way, these will actually be instance attributes, not class attributes based on the way that they're defined, which you'll see in just one second. Now what I wanna do is I wanna go behind the curtain here and show you how things like this actually work that you've probably used before. So if I scroll up here, you can see that I have what's actually known as a descriptor class. Now a descriptor class is something that's used to define kind of common behavior for a property or for an attribute, really a property, but we can also kind of call it attribute as well. The idea is for both price and quantity, we want them to be positive numbers. And we're gonna have the same type of getter and setter for them if we were to define our own property for them because we just wanna make sure that the numbers are positive. So rather than rewriting the getter and the setter twice and defining multiple properties for them, we can use what's known as the descriptor class, which we've written a custom implementation of. Now the descriptor class actually defines how we handle the property and what the getter and setter looks like for common properties, ones that use this descriptor. So I've defined positive number, I've created some type of initialization, which will be ran here. So I could even pass some parameter if I wanted to do that. And right when I initialize this, what happens is this set name dunder method is going to trigger. Now this set name dunder method is going to essentially link the instance of positive number that we just created with the corresponding attribute or property inside of our product class. So what will happen is we will take in the self the owner and the name. The owner is gonna be the class itself and the name is going to be the attribute name that we defined, so price, equal to positive number. So I can say self.name is equal to name and the reason I'm doing this is I wanna know what the name of this attribute is so when I start using a common getter and setter, I can modify that attribute within this product class. I know this is a little bit confusing but I promised we were gonna get into some more advanced concepts. So now we have our getter and our setter, and notice how these are written. In the getter, what happens is it gets the instance and it gets the owner. Again, because we're doing this in a descriptor class and we're using these special underscore underscore get and underscore underscore set methods, which are known as dunder methods or magic methods in Python. These are reserved specifically for this type of behavior. Now what I get is the instance and the owner. The owner is the class and the instance is the instance of this class in which we're acting on. What I do is I say instance dot underscore underscore dictionary underscore underscore. This accesses the dictionary that stores all of the attributes of this instance. And then I say dot get because this is a dictionary. So I can use the dot get method self dot name or zero, which means if self dot name does not exist. So something like price or quantity doesn't exist. We'll just return zero because that's what we do for a positive number implementation. Otherwise, we'll return whatever the value is associated with this name. Again, I know this is a bit confusing, but we'll go through it more in depth in just one second. Then we have our set dunder method. 
Now for the set, we take the instance and we take the value. This is what would come after the equal sign. So in an expression like this, negative 10 would be the value, right? And we say, if the value is less than zero, we're gonna raise some value error. Otherwise, we're gonna do the opposite of this. Rather than getting, we're gonna set in that instance dictionary the attribute. So we're gonna say instance dot dictionary and then self dot name is equal to value. This is how a descriptor class works. I know it's some more advanced syntax, but the idea is we define an instance of the descriptor class, which acts like a property that can be reused for different attributes. The reason why we need all of this complex logic in here is so that we can handle what happens if we're dealing with different attribute names, right? So price, quantity, etc., And that's why we're storing the name and we get that from the underscore, underscore, set, underscore, name, underscore, underscore, dunder method, which is automatically invoked when we write something like this. So if we have a quick look at the implementation down here, you can see that we can define a product. For the product, we can define the price and the quantity. And then if we print out the price and the quantity, this will work. And it will do that by using the getter that comes from the descriptor. Okay, so when we do self.price and self.quantity, we're referring to these two attributes that we defined using the descriptor class. Then if I try to do something like set the price equal to negative 10, it will tell us that it must be a positive value. So if we come here and we go Python, example, 3.py, you can see price must be positive. So it's using this descriptor, even though to us, when we write the code down here, it's very hidden. Now that's the advantage of this descriptor pattern. We can use these common attributes without really needing to know what happens behind the scenes. And it allows us to really protect the internal state of our objects, which is again, what common modules like Django are constantly doing. Now, just to bring this full circle and show you a real world example, I've tried to give a simplified version of what a Django field looks like. So you've probably seen something like this if you've worked in Django before, or maybe even fast API or flask when you're defining a model, you do something like your class, it inherits from some uh, you know, model or whatever. And then you can say something like name is equal to character field, bio is equal to character field, and you pass in some different parameters, right? And you have a bunch of these different fields and all of these fields really are just descriptor classes. Now, this is what it might look like behind the scenes with those descriptor classes. You can see that for my character field, I'm inheriting from model field, which we'll look at in a second. We have some initialization here, we set some maximum length, and then we define our set method, which is used to actually set this field value. So we first make sure that it's type of a string, we make sure that it's within the maximum length, and then we can do this, right? So we have that common implementation for all of our character fields. Then if we go here to our model field, we have a little bit of an inheritance pattern. We define our initialization, we define our set name, we define our get and our set, and then we can inherit from that and we can use that here within this class. And then all of the other types of fields that you would have, like an image field, a bio field, whatever they may be, same thing, they would inherit from the model field. And then we could use them as descriptors for our various attributes or properties inside of our class. I know, this is really getting a little bit complex. We're going behind the curtain, behind the scenes, stuff you don't really need to know a ton about, but I think it's very interesting and I wanted to show you a more complex Python feature on this channel. With that in mind, if you guys enjoyed, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.